If you needed even more evidence that Marvel is not in a good place, I present to you the estimated ticket sales for the Marvels, and it's pretty bad that it's sitting at $39 million. I don't think this is what it'll make. I honestly think the first weekend it'll make probably similar to Ant-Man and Black Panther and a lot of the other Marvel movies. I think it'll make $100, $125 million its first week. And then it will just fall off of a cliff after that because of the fact that nobody goes and watches these movies more than once now. Uh, you've got the hardcore fan base, which is still there, and they will go see it the first weekend, and then that's it. After that, no one's going to go watch a movie again, just like the rest of the stuff, and it's going to fall off of a cliff. But these estimated ticket sales aren't looking good. These are for pre-sale tickets, by the way, which are a good indicator on how a movie might do. It's not, It's not, you know the final all be all but it's it's a pretty good indicator of a movie's success take for example the movie i covered yesterday uh the swift eras tour it's a concert film it's already sitting at 100 million pre-sold tickets this movie has the potential to do a billion dollars if it has legs whether it has legs or not i don't know but i'm telling you these Swift fans, the Swifties, or whatever you want to call them, uh, they are devoted. I haven't, I didn't even see it, but I mean, the, the only thing I can think of to compare this to is something like uh, the Beatles or, you know, some of those boy bands. Like they had huge, like Backstreet Boys. Like they, it, they had huge audiences, but I think she might overtake them. She's massive. So this thing's already sitting at 100 million pre-sold tickets. All right. Or not 100 million. It's sitting at $100 million worth of pre-sold tickets. Uh, pretty impressive. Uh, meanwhile, as of right now, the Marvel's sitting at $39 million. <laughs> well, so Let's take a look at this. Following tickets, following tickets going on sale on Tuesday, it's claimed that the Marvel's tickets pre-sales are in the gutter and are less than a third of James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which could mean the flick may open to less than $39 million. Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy 3 actually opened soft, but due to word of mouth, the flick had good legs and ended with a successful box office. Now, that's, that's true. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 had good legs because it's actually a good movie. I liked that movie. I, I know some people that don't like it, but I thought it was pretty good, and I don't think I'm the only one. That's why the movie actually made money at the box office, but it took a while to get there. I don't see that happening with this movie because I have no hope for this movie to actually be good. That's a first-time director. I think she actually wrote the movie, too. Well, she's not first-time, but this is her first big-budget movie. Uh, she doesn't seem to quite get what's going on or able to read the room because she's out there saying that the reason this movie is going to make a bunch of money is because it's going to be so goofy. Uh, people are sick of the goofy shit. I'm telling you. So guardians of the galaxy opened with a 118.4 million weekend compared to volume two's massive 146.5 million, which I think is in part due to the failure of the MCU since the release of Captain Marvel, as well as the fact that Volume 3 followed Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, which is a complete bust. So, if the Marvel's ticket sales are less than a third of, of Guardians of the Galaxy 3 via box office theory, that could mean the Marvel's box office could open to less than a third of the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 opening box office, which would be $39 million or less. If the ticket sales hold true, the potential $39 million box office opening for the Marvels could be a complete disaster for Kevin Feige, as the first Captain Marvel opened to a whopping 
153.4 million back in 2019. So the sequel would be a decrease of nearly 75%. Yikes. That's bad, ladies and gentlemen. That is bad. Uh, could it open at 39 million? I mean, it's not impossible. We've seen movies do that. I would say also that that's just domestic. So it could do 39 million here and, you know, bring in more money overseas. That's a possibility. It's tough to say, but man, if this thing, if this thing opens that low, that's, that is going to be the final nail in the coffin, I think. And people are going to finally recognize like that it's over for this, for this brand, which is, you know, they're, they're trying to pivot. The daredevil stuff proves that they they're scrapping everything and they're going to eat that 150 million and they're going to remake that show. Daredevil born again. It's going to get remade before it even came out because <laughs> they shot half of it. But you know, it's too little too late, in my opinion. I, I don't think that they can change this and write this ship before they even get there. It's it's going to be interesting to watch, for sure. Uh, they don't have an Av Avengers movie to sandwich this between, as they, as they note here. Kevin Feige doesn't have two Avengers movies to sandwich the sequel between. That's absolutely true. They had... Infinity War and Endgame in between was Captain Marvel. They set Captain Marvel up as something you need to see to enjoy those movies, which was not true. Uh, I no doubt that that movie helped or that that move helped that movie out a lot. They don't have that this time. So interesting stuff. Uh, there's more in here about the director being thrown under the bus or the director throwing Kevin Feige under the bus. She doesn't want to do any more Marvel movies. Uh, Redditors are apparently upset, huh? Oh, no. Per the norm, Redditors are upset, which has seen the moderator of the R Box Office respond in an attempt to calm them down. I'm a mod on R Box Office. Ooh, wow. Reddit moderator. Damn. Women must find you sexy. I knew a post like this would show up here eventually, so I want to clear some things up and provide additional context. Firstly, as you must know, it has been a day since pre-sales started. Secondly, first day pre-sales are an indicator for the opening weekend projection, but just because these pre-sales are slow doesn't mean the movie is going to flop. That's why trades use several weeks' worth of pre-sales data to make their opening weekend projections. Thirdly, some movies start off, start off the hot gate would tickets go on sale, but while others rely on WOM, walk-in business. Yeah, sure. People are just, just walking in to see this piece of shit, I'm sure. Uh, then it turned out to be fine with close to $120 million because of walk-ins. And they're talking about game uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 here. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 had good word of mouth. That's something that you're not even mentioning here. The other side of the spectrum, Taylor Swift's Airs Tour film had recording breaking record breaking pre sales. You might have seen the headlines that resulted in the trades almost guaranteeing a hundred million plus opening weekend domestically and even going as high as 125 million. However, based on ticket sales from this week, BOT is now saying that despite its huge pre sales, it might not open to 100 million. So yeah, I would not start panicking just yet. And then they're saying that the SAG strike will likely be over by then so that the cast can do press tours. Oh, goody. You think that that's going to help the ticket sales? <laughs> All of them are going to be up there talking about how, you know, we need to stop racisms and respect women and how this movie is a huge triumph for women. You think that that's going to help this? Women aren't going to be the ones to show up for this movie. Uh, that's the funny thing. I mean, they're going to show up. For, there'll be some there. I'm not saying all women. But you know what women show up to? Movies like Barbie or Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. <laughs> None of them give a shit about Captain Marvel. Uh, she's not some big icon for women like they want her to be. That's actually the character's ultimate failure because she used to be liked. Women used to like her. 
Hell, women still cosplay as the original, the, the, her old suit, the sexy suit. Uh, barely anybody wants to get cosplayed up in the current Captain Marvel suit, unless they have no hips. Uh, then it, they fit right in it. But anyway, uh, I wanted to touch on Star Wars too, real quick, before we end this video. This was really interesting to me. Uh, Ahsoka had quite the drop-off in its ratings for the final episode, at least according to Samba TV. But here's the thing. Do you know who tuned in for this big time? Older millennials, at least according to Samba TV. That's who tuned into this. You know what that says to me? Star Wars is dead. Star Wars is dead. Okay, the audience you didn't want to keep, uh, they're still there. Uh, you never pulled in the new ones. Very sad. Sad indeed. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Check out my Rumble and Locals, and I will see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my Locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube, they'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.